is actually the most common is the ostrich. So the reaction is, um, that's very nice, but you know what, we're, we're too big for that or it's never going to affect us. So they're like, we'll bury our heads in the sand and it's not going to happen on our watch. The second are the fighters. So they actually believe um, they can fight this with scale, they can eat the startups up or they fight them with lawsuits. And then the third are the pioneers. And I've seen a change in the last six months um, about the conversations happening in a really positive way that this isn't just about investment, this isn't about partnership. As I said, it's about a recognition that structurally they have a problem. This isn't the way institutions should run. This isn't the way people want to interact with their organization. But more importantly, it's not the best way to create value. And that for me is very exciting that you see that shift happening and the conversation is really different. That's really interesting. And so since you give a lot of talks around the world to different types of audiences, I was wondering, so what was the most interesting audience that you presented these ideas to before? Because I'm sure, as you had said uh, to me the other day, this is the first time you're actually speaking only to evangelists and experts, and I'm sure there's been skeptics. <laughs> um, do you know the toughest audience that, um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, favorite. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite movies. and. Yeah. He stands in front of the room and he's like, anyone, anyone, and anyone. Yeah, like, it was um, high net worth um, financial managers. And it, it was total silence in the room. And I went very deep on financial disruption. And what amazed me was, and I don't even know how to say this in um, sort of a sensitive way, was the sheer ignorance. Like, you, you're like, you are in financial services. You work for one of the biggest banks in the world. How can you not know what Bitcoin is? Like, let's start with basic things. Like, how do you know what peer-to-peer -peer lending is? And that is what I find frightening, but I also find exciting because they think they almost have immunity from their ignorance, but that's what will allow the disruptors come in and really catch them of God. And for me, those audiences are really difficult to speak to because I want to help and inspire many people. But sometimes you just walk off stage and you bang your head against a brick wall and you go, that was just a waste of time. So, <laughs> so um, as you said, the, the collaborative economy is really still a child. So what do you think it's going to look like in its adolescence or when it's grown up? Pimply. <laughs> no, I think it's... Um, I was talking to... Um, a couple of people about this like I am worried about it like it's it's in a very fragile and vulnerable state and one of the things I say to all of you in the room definitions are really important we may disagree on definitions but it's not okay to be using all these terms interchangeably we have to figure this out like if we as the community can't figure this out and then we're asking people all around the world to try and understand what it is and we can't even agree on a name and a definition of what it's all about, that is a problem. So I think it's not about putting a tight box around this so that it can't be organic, but it is about us agreeing on some fundamental principles so that as it grows up, like kids, it's not completely lost because it doesn't have some form of boundaries or some curfews, if you like, um, that help guide it in some kind of common direction. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a great closing word for... Uh... <laughs>